In our previous video, we looked at how advanced formatting in the Jaspreyport server can be used to update the look and feel of ad hoc charts. Now, let's look in more detail at how you can use CSS inside your application to control both the format and general styling of tables and crosstabs. Since Visualize.js embeds seamlessly within an application's JavaScript, CSS overrides can be used to toggle different elements of the views, such as the Visualization Launcher, and control margins, font sizes, colors, and other related styles of tabular views. In this video, we walk through Jasper Report class names and show you how to discover the classes relevant to your embedded views. Keep in mind that while ad hoc charts depend largely on the Jasper Report server for advanced formatting, embedded tables and crosstabs are ideally suited to inherit CSS that is native to your application. Let's look at the following application code under Module 1.3, which you can download from GitHub in the link in the description below. Here we have two cross tabs, one that is styled so that it only renders the totals, and another with a full view of the data. In this way, you can show or hide as much data from the cross tab as needed, simply by using CSS overrides within your application. Let's start by looking at the class names for styling the full cross tab view. Opening ad hoc.css, we see we have some general CSS for styling the cross tab in much the same way that we may control the container for any other rendered ad hoc view. We can also control the styling for the rows and cells that are specific to the header of our data table, as well as the cells that are specific to the row group which makes up our left hand panel on a cross tab. We can call out specific styles for general data table text, as well as provide independent control for both odd and even rows. Moving up to our large totals numbers example, we can see that the visualization selector has been removed with CSS. A general large font size is set for our numbers, but by using set styles, the majority of our class names are set to hide their elements. This is an example of just how drastic a change can be made to a cross tab, where all classes except for those related to totals hide their display. Now let's take a look at a few of our live API fiddles, where we can differentiate more of the styles that are related to tables, and later, build on cross tabs. Opening the Customize with CSS fiddle, we can view a table with some styling. Notice that the data now loads on demand as you scroll down a table, which is a new feature for version 7. On the .jr mDataTable header class, Let's change the color and font size. Here we have styling with some padding above our header text, which relates to our field or row. Scrolling down further, we can style the headers for our cell numbers, which relate to our measures or columns. We can also style the individual data table cells, where in this case, We'll change the font color to green, font weight to bold, and add a border two pixels in size that is solid and black. We can also see our cell text in black that relates to our field product name and the odd row class with a lighter brown and even rows with a slightly darker brown color. We can also style the row that relates to the grouping of our ad hoc table with a light blue color. This gives you a good idea of the classes that control the look and feel of a data table. Now, for cross tabs, we can open the cross tab with CSS Fiddle, which gives us additional ways to add new styles. Like tables, data loads on demand as you scroll downward. In addition, for fields, Cross tabs have a fixed left panel, allowing you to scroll horizontally across data. Some of the classes that can be used for cross tab styles include cell field, cell total, odd and even versions of cell total, and odd and even versions of cell value, 
if desired for styling. To finish this video, let's also look at how you can discover ad hoc view class names using the tools in your browser. For this example, I'm going to use the developer tools in Google Chrome, but you can use any web console tools that you like. Here in the top left hand corner, we use the selector tool to hover over each area of our ad hoc view and discover the classes that we could reference in our CSS to change the style for that section. Selecting a section of the view also allows us to open the HTML, allowing us to dig deeper into different sections that we may also want to discover the class names for. Now with these tools and the ability to use CSS with your ad hoc views, allows you to create BI that will blend directly within your application. Mm -hmm.